Hello, my friends. It's Connie Stewart with simplysimplestamping.com. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Hey, if you love fun folds, we're in for a fun time. I have got the easiest, uh, simplest fun fold. We're going to let designer series paper be the star. And what's fun with this one, it's just kind of a really awesome uh, accordion fold. You're just not going to believe how fast and easy this card is to create. So I say we go get started. I love fun folds and I love easy fun folds. And this one definitely falls into the category of fast, easy, fun, fun cards, right? We're going to let designer series paper kind of be the star of our cards. We're going to create this very simple thank you card. I'll explain a little bit more because I've got some tips and tricks on this one. You don't need a lot to create the cards and we love that, right? I have a piece of designer series paper. This is from Delightfully Eclectic. My friends, this is cut five and a half by 12. I'll show you the scoring on that here in just a minute. Um, we've got some cardstock. I have a piece of basic black, four by five and a quarter. I have a piece of basic white, three and three quarters by five. And then I have two pieces. This actually falls into the flashcard series. If you're not familiar with flashcards, I'll put the link up there in the corner. But I have a piece of fresh freesia, four and a quarter by two and three quarters, and a basic white, four by two and a half. That's all we need. Oh, yeah and a little ribbon bow. <laughs> okay, that's what we need to create the card. Let's go ahead and talk about how to score your designer series paper. So this particular pattern, there's not a right or wrong direction, okay? Either, either way is going to work. So I said I have a tip on this if you've got your pattern paper that goes in a certain direction, but for our first card, it doesn't matter, and that sure makes it easy. You're going to want the pattern that you want to be on the inside of the card. That's what we want to be face up when we do our scoring. Um, I have got a uh, free download that will go along with today's video. So if you want to have these measurements, you're going to have them right there. I've got photos of the cards, the complete supply list, a link back to this video, and a place that you can order if you need to. You'll find that at simplysimplestamping.com or you can look down in the YouTube description for a direct link. So our scoring measurements, and like I said, these are in the download one and three quarters, four and three quarters, and seven and three quarters. That's all we need. Now I'm using my Simply Scored board. You can also do this on your paper trimmer using your scoring blade. All right, time to do some folding. So I'm going to fold over that one and three quarter, and then I'm going to fold backwards, kind of an accordion fold. If you're using your bone folder very gently, uh, crease that with your bone folder and then we're going to accordion fold again. Can you see how we did that? All right, so that is the card base. Let's do a little stamping. I'm going to be using the circle sayings on this card. Now this stamp set you can purchase as a bundle and it comes with a matching uh, circle punch, but you know what? We're not gonna use that one today. We're gonna use these great flowers. Uh, we are going to say thank you and let's use this little starburst too. I'm going to start with a fresh freesia ink pad and on my two and a half by four, I'm going to stamp those flowers up at the top, rotate the stamp around. I'll stamp it again down here at the bottom. I'll bring in a Memento Black ink pad and we'll stamp our thank you right there in the middle. And that little starburst, it kind of helps fill in. So I'm gonna tuck that right here at the uh, top and the bottom of my flowers. Friends, that is our focal image for the front. That is done. Now for the inside of the card, I'm going to put a little burst here in three corners. All right, just three corners. So we're gonna leave that bottom left alone and I'm gonna switch things out. Let me come back to my fresh freesia and we're going to say, because you're awesome. So this is a thank you because you're awesome card. I can now adhere both of these pieces onto their layering card stock. Time to bring in that card base. We'll add this one 
here to the inside. I mean, really, it's that fast, you guys, just so fast. But what I love about this card is how much of my designer series paper really gets to show now, off. My front focal image is going to go right here, but I want you to see it's only going to go on this first tab. So I'm gonna share with you a little trick. What I like to do is flip my focal image over. I'm gonna center it on all four sides, and now I can see right where I want my adhesive because I only want it on this panel. That is gonna make it super easy for me to see. So when I flip this over, I can center it up again. And another little trick I have is to just kind of tap it in place. Let's open it up. I wanna make sure I don't have any adhesive hanging off and I don't. And you remember that cute little bow? I'm gonna press that onto a mini glue dot. This is the black and white gingham ribbon. And I'm telling you, it makes for the perfect um, accent to that card. Look at that. Isn't that so fun? What a great way to use that designer series so paper. on this card, I told you I had some tips and tricks, and I do. So I wanted the crushed curry polka dots to kind of be the focal image of my card. But do you notice, look at my pattern. This isn't like my other one where it was all random. This one has a distinct uh, layout. So here are some tips for you. Tip number one, when you cut your designer series paper, you want it to go landscape, not portrait. So make sure you're 12 inches that your pattern is going to sit this direction. Okay, that's tip number one. Tip number two is about how you score this paper. And let me share with you what yours truly did. Yep, I scored it and went, well, that's a problem. My flowers are upside down. So my only other option to fix that was to put the flowers on the inside. And I didn't want the flowers on the inside. So here is what you can do if uh, you have a pattern that goes a certain direction. By the way, this paper is also from Delightfully Eclectic. But what I want you to do, if you have a pattern, I want you to put that into whether you use your Simp Simply Scoreboard or you're using uh, your paper trimmer to score on. That pattern needs to be upside down upside down to do the scoring and the scoring will be the same one and three quarters, four and three quarters and seven and three quarters. All right, I want to go ahead and teach you the stamping that I did on this one. I will be using the Timeless Charm stamp set and everything is the same. So our five and a half by 12 on our designer series paper, our basic white pieces are the same. Uh, the only thing I changed were the colors here. These are both in Melon Mambo. All right, let's do some stamping. I'm gonna start here with the Crushed Curry ink pad. And there were these great dots. And I'm just gonna rotate my stamp around. And you see, I'm just kind of stamping this down one side. Next, I'm going to come in with Misty Moonlight. And I'll be using a lot of Misty Moonlight on this card. Uh, so for our focal image, we're going to stamp, thanks for all you do, and you're gonna love this, we're going to stamp crooked on purpose. I love stamping crooked on purpose because then I don't have to worry about whether or not it was straight. I'm gonna make it purposely like that. I've got this flower. I'm gonna stamp one right down here in the corner and we're going to stamp two of those flowers here on my focal image. Now, I wanna try to get the edge of this flower to touch the other one, perfect. Yeah, I wanted those to kind of touch each other. Now I'm going to come in with the leafy image. And you know what, I better bring in a little grid paper to have underneath me because I am probably going to be stamping off my actual card. I'm going to come in with this other leaf. And do you see how I'm just kind of, I'm just filling in a little bit, just kind of expanding that. All right, now that we have that done, it's time to do just a little bit of coloring. I'm going to use Bubble Bath and Parakeet Party uh, Stampin' Write Markers. But friends, you are more than welcome to do this with your Stampin' Blends. You know I'm a huge fan of those. But I'm really loving the new style markers. The brush tip, I kind of like to call it more of a paintbrush tip. And I'm just going to color in those flowers with some bubble bath ink. 
And by the way, if you didn't have the markers, did you know that the uh, water painters, you could also use your water painters to accomplish this. You will just simply uh, make a little ink puddle um, with your ink pad in bubble bath and then use those um, water painters to color in. It's another really great tip. All right. I think you figured out what I'm going to do with the parakeet party. It's not too difficult to figure out. We're going to color in our leaves. Make sure you're not using the tip of your brush marker, okay? You always want to, we want to keep it from shredding, like we wouldn't want to color this way. So I always encourage you to just kind of paint, okay? So use your marker on the side that'll keep that tip nice and sharp and that's what we want i've got one last little bit of stamping and this is this is honestly this is sometimes some of my favorite stamps i call them blob stamps because i don't know what else to call them but look what happens when we just stamp over the word thanks let me show you what it, do you see it just gives a nice soft little water watercolor look so pretty i love working with that stamp and then just as we did before, of course, remember, I messed up my uh, designer series paper, but you know what? I don't think I did too bad. I think that combination is going to look very, very pretty together. I wanted to add a little ribbon knot with the inner braid Misty Moonlight ribbon. And guess what? I've got another trick for you. So it's only kind of that braid pattern on one side. Here's how to make sure that pattern is on the outside. I want you to hold it upside down. So kind of ugly side up. And I'm going to go and tie it in a knot. Okay, so you see ugly side is up. But look at this, what's happening here? Yep, braided side is up. I'm gonna give it a twist right before I pull. And what happens when I do that, one, I have pretty side up, but do you notice my knot, ugly side, pretty side. So whenever you're working with a ribbon that only has a pattern on one side, that is a trick that's going to be so helpful. So let me add this to my card with a mini glue dot. And I'm going to put that one right there. One last little thing. Did you notice I didn't color in the center of my flowers? No. Because I'm going to add some bling. These are the glossy dot assortments. And you know what is so awesome about these? First of all, look at this pow of color here. Um, I'm going to be using the largest ones that come in the collection. But they're nice and flat. But boy, they have this amazing... Uh, shine. I mean, just look what that does to my card. And you know what? Because they're flat, that means I get to actually add one to the inside of my card. Very rarely do I ever get to add gems to the inside of my cards because it would kind of ding it up. But you know what? These are so nice and flat. It's going to work great. And there you go, my friends. That is what you call a fast fun fold accordion card. I mean, look at that. It was great that we were able to do it with the flashcard series. And here's the thing. It was such simple stamping, quick, easy. It's a great way to use up some of that designer series paper that might need a little bit of love. And you know what? You name the stamp set, it's probably going to fit in this area right here. Have fun creating. If you enjoy the video today, I would love a thumbs up on YouTube. Thank you so much for that. And if you haven't subscribed, why not click the subscribe button, ring the bell to update your notifications. YouTube will let you know whenever I'm back with a new video. And hey, while you're at it, if you've got some crafty friends, share the channel with them. We'd love to have them join in. Thank you again, everyone, for being here. I can't wait to stamp with you next time. Bye-bye.